and Rootubers, you know, welcome to our live tonight. Tonight we're going to talk about reversing hypertension naturally with um, herbs, lifestyle changes, and supplementation, you know, especially those who live in the black community, you know, yeah. So we're going to chat a little bit about um, what can cause hypertension, what different types of hypertension, and what herbs we can use to reverse it. So we're going to put you on a program, and we're going to give you the highlights of the program in a little while, tell you what you have to do, and what you have to take to reverse hypertension. All right, now, there are different different types of hypertension. And a lot of the times, if you have a high level of homocysteine, it's amino acid, you can have trouble in the heart also. So if you do have hypertension, also ask your doctor for a test for your homocysteine levels. And that can tell your doctor if there is anything wrong in your heart also, okay? Don't forget the name, homocysteine. A high level of homocysteine can cause heart disease long term. Now, none of us was born with high blood pressure. None of us was born with cancer. None of us was born with diabetes. You know, none of us was born with sinus troubles and inflammation. You know, but we all developed that condition from bad eating habits. And not even genetics is the diet that we have. Yeah? So on this program, we're going to show you how to re retrain yourself and discipline yourself to help your heart. Because 750,000 people die every year in America from heart disease. And once you have high blood pressure, it's telling me that something is wrong in your heart. All right? All right. So um, we're going to show you a few uh, things that can cause high blood pressure and what you can do to alleviate that condition, all right? Now, if you are on medication, I do not want you to come off your medication at all, period. If you have severe hypertension, severe hypertension means your pressure is either 200 that systolic, 110 diastolic, that's severe hypertension. Do not come off your, do not come off your medication. Mild to moderate hypertension, is 140 over 90 or 140 systolic over 90 diastolic yeah that pressure can be repaired in a month or two if you have mild to moderate hypertension and if you do have mild to moderate hypertension your doctor not supposed to put you on no drug period because you're mild to moderate just like Borderline diabetes, you're not supposed to go to drug for that either. Right? But if you're severe, do not come off your medication, but you can wean yourself off the drug. So we're going to teach you tonight how you can wean yourself off these drugs and get your heart back. Yeah? All right, son? Pictures. So the first thing we're going to do now, I'm going to show you how to, um, yeah? Wonderful. Where? Yeah? Now, there are different types of hypertension, right? Don't forget. We said this is, this is the hypertension of the brain. Don't forget. You can have brain high blood pressure too. Yeah? It is called intra, intra cardiac hypertension. That is in the brain. And lots of the time, you get this type of hypertension when you have things as aneurysm or it can cause aneurysm or you have weak blood vessels like my mom she had lots of the best uh, you had blood vessel disease in her brain so she had troubles with hypertension from the brain so all these is called uh intracardinal hypertension or pressure around the brain and that could come from strokes it could come from an aneurysm we have a bulging disc, uh, a bulging um, vessel in the brain. It can come from uh, blood vessel disease, like my mama had. It can come um, from a brain tumor, or it can come from meningitis. So if you do have meningitis, or you do have this condition, it can cause all these problems also. All right? Don't forget. 
It is called intracranial hypertension or pressure around the brain. Now, if you do have that type of high blood pressure, we have to strengthen the blood vessels in the brain and we have to prevent aneurysm. And in the process of doing that with this kind of hypertension, we have to work on cleaning up the, uh, the carotid artery, the artery that carry blood or oxygen to the brain. Yeah? So we're going to talk about that in a little while. All right? So that's the one of the hypertension. Then we have symptoms of this hypertension. This one right here. Symptoms. You have tendonitis or ringing in the air. That is a sign that something is wrong in your brain. Yeah? Getting what we call brain hyperpressure. Vision problems. If you have trouble with vision. You know, vision problems. You can have troubles also with this condition of the brain called brain hypertension. Neck pain. Not every time you have neck pain, you have that, but neck pain also and shoulder pain can be a sign of these troubles in your brain. Brain hypertension. Or venous stenosis. Narrowing of the veins can also cause you to get these troubles. And these conditions come from bad eating habits, man. Where you, where you clog up your arteries. You clog up your brain. Yeah? So these are the symptoms of that type of high blood pressure they call brain hypertension or intracranial hypertension. All right? Don't forget. Now we're going to go to types of heart disease because we know for a fact that lots of people who have hypertension have troubles in their heart. Yeah? So high blood pressure is telling me that something is wrong with your heart. So I knew for a fact that when I had hypertension, I had troubles in my heart and I got a stroke. But I reversed my hypertension by going on a program. And now I'm teaching my people how to do the same thing. So don't, don't let anyone tell you that you have to take an ACE inhibitor, a water pill, a beta blocker, a calcium channel blocker forever. That's not true. You have to have discipline in order to reverse your hypertension. We're going to teach, we're going to teach you how. Types of heart disease. One type of heart disease is called angina pectoris. And that is when the patient or the person who have heart disease or high blood pressure have a heavy pain or pressure in the chest. And that's when they give you a nitrate pill. Put on your tongue. They don't fix it though. It only dilates the blood vessel, the vessels, so that you can you, the blood can flow, but you don't fix your your heart. See, that's what the medical system does. But I'm going to show you how to you, how you can unblock your arteries to prevent angina pectoris. Yeah. So when you have angina pectoris, you have heavy pain or pressure in the chest, yeah, from diminished supply of oxygen to your heart. So once you have angina pectoris, it's telling me that something is wrong in your arteries, in your heart. So you can have high blood pressure and still get angina pectoris. See? If your pressure is not under control. Yeah? So once you have angina pectoris, that is a symptom that something is wrong in your heart. It's a sign. So it's heavy pain or pressure in the chest from the mean supply of oxygen to the heart muscle. And angina can cause you to get a heart attack. And I lost two friends of mine to a heart attack. Yeah? One got a heart attack sitting on his toilet bowl. And the other man got a heart attack driving into a bank. And because he felt it, he could have put his car in park and he died right there. So you have to take care of the heart. I'm going to show you how. Yeah? Next one. It's called hardening of the arteries. Or atherosclerosis. And lots of people who have hypertension and have stent or the angioplasty did have this kind of condition. And that is hardening of the arterial walls when the posits of fatty substances from the food that you eat start gathering on the walls of your arteries, causing your arteries to become thick. Huh? Impairing the blood from flowing 
and then you start getting what we call angina pectoris. So, hardening of the arteries can cause angina, pain in your chest, whereby the supply of oxygen is diminished going to your heart because of hardening of the arteries. Because you want to be 50 and 60 years old and eat a lot of fried foods and greasy foods. Not knowing that you a certain age bracket and your heart, you don't want them food no more. You're not 5 and 6 and 10 year old where you eat a lot of fried and run around in the pasture and play and burn it up. You don't do that no more. So automatically because your habit is so bad from infancy, you wish to be 50, 60 years old and you keep on eating the same fried food arteries, raise your cholesterol levels and then you get hardened of the arteries and then it deposits all the fatty substances on the, wall, on the walls of your arteries causing them to become thick, impairing the blood flow to your heart and you get angina pectoris and you get a heart attack. So, hardening of the arteries can cause what? Angina pectoris. Next one. Heart attacks. It's called myocardial infarction in the medical term. Yeah? A heart attack or myocardial infarction occurs when the blood supply and the oxygen that the blood carries to the heart is cut off. C-U-T-O-F-F. -F, cut off. What happens after that, Patrick? Dance? Oh, the heart dies. And the, when the heart dies, you die too. So both of you all die. The heart die and it kills you too. So you get a heart attack. See? And the heart attack also can come from what? Atherosclerosis. Hardening of the arteries. So this guy here called atherosclerosis is the culprit of not only angina pectoris, of not only clogging up the arteries, but it is a culprit to cause you to get a heart attack. We call it a worm attack. Then pork, you're eating every day with all the worm from the pork, you clean your heart. You get a worm attack, and you all call it a heart attack. So a heart attack, or what we call myocardial infarction, occurs when blood supply and oxygen is car it carries to the heart, is cut off, and what happens after that, Patrick Dells? You die, or the heart dies, and the heart kills you one time, so you get what we call a heart attack. Let's go again. Congestive heart failure. All those are conditions of heart disease. Congestive heart failure. This one also comes from either the kidney, kidney is bad because your pressure is too high, you damage your heart, or it could also come from what? Ad, uh, atherosclerosis. Yeah? Congestive heart failure can also come from atherosclerosis, having of the arteries. So this is the culprit of angina pectoris. This is the culprit of heart attacks. This is the culprit of congestive heart failure too. Yeah? All right. So congestive heart failure or cardiomyopathy in the medical system is a failure of the heart muscle when the heart has been weakened by a heart attack and is unable to pump fully resulting in blood congestion in your heart and then all of a sudden when you have congestive heart failure you get your shortness of breath why patrick does because once the blood can't move and the heart cannot pump the blood because the heart is too weak your lung suffers because the lung depends on your heart and the kidney depends on your heart so your feet start swelling and then the water goes to the heart and they call it cardiac edema water around the heart and blood congestion of your heart muscle. They call it congestive heart failure. When you have that, you must be under the control of a cardiologist. Don't forget now. So a congestive heart failure is cardiomyopathy and is a failure of the heart muscle when your heart becomes weak by even high blood pressure. Hmm? Or by a heart attack and is unable to pump fully resulting in blood congestion in your heart muscle and you start to get shortness of breath you can lay down flat on your back 
because now the water coming from the kidney can move out because the heart is not working properly. It's too weak to pump the 25% of the blood that your kidney needs and the water goes to the lung and you get the shortness of breath or you get pneumonia because they all work together. Your kidney controls your heart, your heart controls the kidney, and the kidney controls your lung, and your lung controls your kidney, and your lung controls your heart. Next one, high blood pressure. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. When you have high blood pressure, high blood pressure weakens the heart. Yeah? And high blood pressure degenerates the arteries. Don't forget I said before, that high blood pressure weakens your heart muscle. And that's where you get a heart attack long term because heart is weak. Or you get congestive heart failure because the heart is weak. Because high blood pressure weakens your heart muscle. Especially if your systolic number is too high. More than 200. Yeah? It makes your heart beat too fast. It swells your heart. And then you get congestive heart failure. So high blood pressure weakens the heart and degenerates the arteries and is a major cause of strokes. That's what I had at 32 years old. Heart failure and also heart attacks. So high blood pressure, if it's not under control, can weaken your heart muscle. And in the process, degenerate your arteries. And sometimes if your arteries is so degenerated, you can take all the pills in the world and your pressure still high. You can take all the herbs in the world and your pressure still high. Why? Because all your arteries is degenerating. All the blood vessels are weak. They're popping. Yeah? And then your pressure is not under control. You're taking all these drugs, and the doctors say, well, they're going to give you some more milligrams, 100 milligrams, 50 milligrams, to read it from 5 milligrams, because you are, you are degenerating and weakening your heart muscle, and in the process, the arteries is coming very weak also because they're degenerating. Go back to the board now, sir. You can come back and teach you what you got to do. So the Western, in the Western Hemisphere, high blood pressure is a killer, especially to black people. Yeah? We full up. So I'm going to teach you now. Let's go to the screen now, brother. I'm going to teach you now. You're on Facebook, right, sir? Mm -hmm. yeah, wonderful. Facebook Live. We live on Facebook and YouTube together. Because we can teach our people. Neighborhood. So now we're going to 30 day program to reverse hypertension. If you have mild to moderate hypertension, meaning that your pressure is 140 systolic over 90 diastolic. That's mild to moderate hypertension. If you have a higher level of the systolic number, 160 and up, it's a possibility your program might be a, might take a little longer because now you're going to be severe. And sometimes your arteries is all clogged up. And if you have a stent, meaning that you did angioplasty where you had a blockage and they put a stent in there, you will have to clean it up. And we're going to show you how to do that. All right? Okay. Now, we talked about the heart already. We talked about, um, so I'm to clip it up, right? We talked about the superior vena cava. We talked about the inferior vena cava. We talked about the left and right ventricle, the chambers of the heart, lower and upper chamber. We talked about those. Now, if you want to keep this muscle healthy, you have to have a pH of 7.8, 7.45 in the blood because your heart muscle functions in a pH of 7.45. So if the body is too acidic, yeah, it can affect the thyroid gland. And in turn, the thyroid gland can cause you to have trouble in your heart, palpitation. If the body is in an acid state also, your heart can suffer because the heart functions better in a pH potential hydrogen of 7.4, 7.45. So look at the aorta. If you have aorta damage, it can damage your heart. If you have the, the right ventricle, the left ventricle, the right ventricle, what you call uh, right or left ventricle hypertrophy, you can get congestive heart failure. So if this ventricle here, the left one over here, is inflamed or enlarged, it can cause you to get congestive heart failure. 
if the right ventricle is enlarged, you stand a better chance of fixing it faster than having hypertrophy of the left ventricle. The inferior vena cava is very significant because all the blood coming from, from the, hepatic, the hepatic vein of your liver have to go through the inferior vena cava from the liver and into the atrium and into the atrium to the ventricle and from the ventricle into the pulmonary vein to send it out in your lung as carbon dioxide. So that's how the heart works. But if there is congestive, congestion in the heart muscle or if there is trouble in your kidney, you're going to have trouble in this muscle. And if there is trouble in this muscle, whereby the left ventricle and the right ventricle is not working properly, and the left atrium and the right atrium is not working properly, it's going to affect your kidney. Because the kidney controls the heart. The water organ and the heart is the metal, is the fire, 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 fire element. Water or fire, right? So we're going to teach you now. Types of hypertension. We just mentioned one a while ago. Uh, that's in the brain. We call it brain hypertension or pressure around the brain. It's called intracranial hypertension. Then you have vascular hypertension. You have essential hypertension. Look at essential hypertension. Essential hypertension is telling us or telling the doctor that there is no cause of that hypertension. So in the medical system, if the doctor said to you, oh, look at that, you have essential hypertension, he's telling you for a fact that he don't know where your pressure is coming from. Your pressure has to come from somewhere. Because you didn't born with hypertension. Common sense. You didn't born with heart disease. Common sense. You didn't born with lung troubles and kidney troubles. Common sense. So they have to come from somewhere. So when he tells you that you have essential hypertension, he's telling you, oh, I don't know where it's coming from, so you got to take a pill for the rest of your life. Essential. Look up, look up the word essential. Necessary hypertension. Preliminary hypertension, meaning that all the veins from the, from the lung into the, into, the muscle, into the heart is giving you troubles. You get preliminary hypertension. Endocrine hypertension, meaning that you're getting hypertension from the endocrine system, from the adrenal gland, from the thyroid gland. Yeah? Because all these glands in the endocrine, in the endocrine system can cause you to get hypertension. So once you know where your pressure is coming from, you can fix your pressure. Yeah? So endocrine hypertension is telling me that you either have a high cortisol level or you have troubles in the, in the medulla or the cortex of the adrenals because the cortex also deals with potassi potassium balance and sodium balance. So if there is trouble in the cortex of the, of the endocrine gland called the adrenals, and it can cause you to get also hypertension. We call endocrine hypertension. If the thyroid gland is overactive, it can cause hypertension. So if you're taking your high blood pressure and the pressure reads 190 over 100 and the pulse says, come on, and the pulse says 120, you know for a fact that your pressure is coming from the endocrine gland called the thyroid gland. It's called constipation hypertension. If you are constipated, you can get hypertension too. Because once you're constipated and you have toxins in the bloodstream going back into the hepatic flexure and the liver cannot filter the blood properly and the heart needs pure oxygen yeah, with, with a nutrient to the heart muscle, you're going to get hypertension from that. So constipation can cause hypertension. Liver and gallbladder, hypertension. Meaning that you can get hypertension from the liver or the gallbladder because there's a the, there's the meridian running from the gallbladder to your heart. So if you lose your gallbladder, it's a problem long term because you can get troubles in your heart long term or troubles in the pancreas because the gallbladder is gone. So liver and gallbladder hypertension, meaning that your hypertension could come from bad liver health or bad gall gallbladder health if you have such in the gallbladder gallstones. Yeah? Blocked arteries hypertension, meaning that if you have trouble in arteries that is all clogged up and they're weak hmm, and the coronary artery cannot move all the nutrients to the heart muscle, you can get what we call blocked arteries hypertension. Or you can get what we call heavy metal hypertension, meaning that you have a lot of mercury in your mouth or your mouth full of mercury. Yeah? You can also get hypertension from that. Yeah? Or if there's mercury anyway in the spleen, you can get heavy metal hypertension. And that's the reason why we, we promote what we call heavy metal cleanse. Acid hypertension. What well, Patrick is crazy? Acid hypertension. What the hell is that? What the hell is that? That's acidosis. Acidosis can cause 
acid hypertension. Why? Because the body is too acidic. And the blood pH is supposed to be three, uh, 7.45, 7.35. Arterial blood, venous blood, capillary blood. And you have to have, Dr. Ma Dr. Michael, Michael Terrell said to us, he said, if you can keep acid from the blood and toxin from the blood, you will never get a disease easy. <clears throat> so we know for a fact that lots of people are eating the food in the wrong way, wrong in combination, and they're eating so much acid foods together that the body becomes too acidic, huh? a pH of 5.0, 6.5, acidic on a regular basis, which can affect the heart because the heart needs you to keep it functioning in an alkaline terrain of 7.45. Let's pay all your capillary, venous, and, and arterial blood works. All right? So now we know all the different types of hypertension. And so we're going to cover all of them tonight because we're going to treat the body as one entity. All right, day one. When you start this program, if you're on medication and you have mild to moderate hypertension, meaning that you have a pressure of 140 over 90, that's mild to moderate hypertension. It's easier for you to repair your hypertension because it is mild. If you have severe hypertension, meaning that you have a high level of uh, systolic, 200, diastolic, 110, that means you have severe hypertension. Lots of the time, you have what you call heavy metal poisoning. And you, if you are a painter, painting houses, painting cars, you can also get what we call heavy metal hypertension. If you have mercury in your mouth, it could affect your heart, you can also get heart disease, or you can also get hypertension. So a lot of the times, you have high blood pressure. You have all this mercury in your mouth. Hmm? Your doctor don't know where it's coming from, and the pressure keeps going high. Yeah? But he don't know that all the metals that you have in your system is causing your heart to malfunction. Mercury in the mouth, aluminum in your deodorants, aluminum in your foils. Yeah? They could affect your heart. So on the first day, you're going to do what we call a flushing of your liver and your intestines. You're going to get three tablespoons of Epsom salts in hot water. <clears throat> You're going to drink it before bed. But lots of people who drink Epsom salts, it can raise their pressure. So if you know for a fact that Epsom salts raise your pressure, you can use castor oil, you can use mineral oil, or you can use some cascara sagrada or some buckton bath for that, for, for that flush. But if you know for a fact that you can use the Epsom salts, you're going to use three tablespoons of Epsom sauce in a small amount of hot water before you go to bed and stir it up. You can put some apple juice in there or some watermelon juice in there and you can drink it before the bed, followed by, before your before bedtime, followed by one glass of pink grapefruit juice and one tablespoon of grapeseed oil. Before you go to bed, at the first night, and you're going to, re you're going to repeat this for me the next day so it is bet it is best for you to do this on a saturday if you don't have to work on a sunday because on sunday you'll be cleaning the bowels and you'll be cleaning up the organ system organs of elimination and those that filters your blood right in the process we will be giving you uh, uh, uh concepts or ideas on how to strengthen back the arteries if they're weak and clean up the arteries so you can prevent yourself from going on under the knife with a man cut your chest open and putting some stentacle and your plastic. All right? So that's, that's day number one. So day number one, you're going to flush the whole of the GI tract, the gastrointestinal system. You're going to flush it up. You're going to keep it empty. And the next morning you get up again, you're going to do the same thing like you did the night before. Three tablespoons of some salt and hot water or some cascara, some, gravel, some castor oil, some buckton bark. You're going to drink that. Before bed, followed by one glass of pink grapefruit, one tablespoon of grapeseed oil. You're going to put a pinch of cayenne pepper in there and a piece of ginger because ginger helps to prevent your heart from becoming enlarged if you can mix that with turmeric and also herb called astragalus and danqui, which can prevent also congestive heart failure. Don't forget the name of the plants. If you have an enlarged heart, put some ginger in there. One tablespoon of, of grapeseed oil in the morning again, and then you're going to put some ginger in the grapefruit. If you think you have an enlarged heart, or you can add some uh, danqui, some turmeric powder, or some turmeric, or you can put some astragalus. And what these herbs do together is they help the heart to stay normal. And if it is enlarged, it will fix that too. On oh God. Day two. So on the first day, I don't want you eating no food. 
Because I want you to rest your organs for one day. So the first day after the cleansing, I want you to drink lots of water and lots of coconut water if it's in your environment. You have to drink a lot of that because now you're going to be flushing your system. If you don't have kidney disease, if you have kidney disease, if you have stage 4 or stage 5 kidney disease, do not drink coconut water. Do not drink too much water either because you are in a stage where you are pre-dialysis or on dialysis. Yeah? So prevent yourself from going there. So on the second day, you're going to start juicing now. Because the first day, you clean. And then number, number two, you must have a high blood pressure machine because you're going to be checking your pressure two to three times per day and logging it down every day. Follow up. So for the first day, you clean the night. And then the next day, you get up, you clean again. And then for that same day, you're going to drink lots of water. Lots of coconut water. Huh? You could have some soups if you want, but no food. No cooked food. You're resting your organs. And you're giving your heart a break. Yeah? And when you give the heart a break, the heart going to be pumped to you and regenerate. Because the heart has the ability to regenerate. Now, so that's what you're going to do. Day two, you're going to have one green, yellow, and red pepper. You're going to put two peg of garlic, one stick of ginger, one cucumber, one stick of celery, one green apple for neutrality to keep the, to keep the body alkaline, three sticks of turmeric, and one handful of parsley, and you're going to juice those for me. And I want you to have three to four glasses of that per day if you can afford it. Because you could afford to go and pay $500 for VP, VIP, in them big shows. You can spend $500 a go and, and to have VIP in Carnival. Yeah? So how come you can't spend $500 to go and get some juice to fix, to fix your hypertension and your heart? But you can prepare yourself for Carnival and get your big costume, costing you $600 and $2,000 for Carnival and jump around with that. But when coming to your health, huh? you can't spend that kind of money. Dig that. So you're, you have your priorities all mixed up. See? Because all the time you will have all these troubles in your heart, heart failure, huh? heart attacks, we're going to kill you, high blood pressure. And when you have all into you can't go and jump around in carnival. So your heart bad, your heart shortness of breath. You can't go and pay five hundred dollars to go into VIP because your heart bad. Yeah? Did that. So spend your money on your health. Then thing come after. One green, yellow, and red pepper. You're gonna juice them. Two peg of garlic, because garlic gonna clean up the arteries. And because garlic is acidic, you're gonna put some cucumbers, celery, the alkali. Yeah? Ginger, alkali. So you're going to buffer. So this juice is, go, is going to help to keep the heart healthy, but in the process, it's going to clean up the arteries and drop your pressure too. So that's what you're going to do for day two only. Juice is the load. Juice is the load. And you're checking your pressure. Yeah? Wonderful. And then the fruit juices now. Now these juices in the bottom here, the grapes and the blueberries and the gooseberries and the blackberries, what they do is... They start strengthening the, the, the capillaries. They start strengthening the arteries. They start strengthening the veins. Yeah? So they don't collapse. So you don't get blood vessel disease. Because that's why God put them on earth for that. God put these berries on the herbs, on the earth, to strengthen your arteries, to prevent uh, uh, artery uh, 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 clogging, to prevent high homocysteine level, to prevent blood vessel disease, to prevent aneurysm. Fruit juices, grapes with the seeds. Blueberries, gooseberries, raspberries, blackberries, beets. And you want to mix this in a blender with some coconut water. And I want you to drink that for me. Because beets have lots of magnesium. It's good for your heart because magnesium is found in your heart muscle. And magnesium has choline. And choline has to drench your liver. Yeah. So you're working on the liver at the same time. When you're strengthening your veins and strengthening your arteries. And all these berries will keep the heart strong so you don't get congestive heart failure. You don't get heart disease. You don't get heart attack. And in the process, you prevent yourself from going in a man uh, 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 laboratory in the ER, laying on your back, cutting your chest open to do bypass surgery or to do, uh, to do angioplasty, putting a stent in your arteries to make it flow. But he didn't know better. He wasn't taught that in medical school. He wasn't taught how to clean up your arteries naturally. But you can do that for me. Yeah? So the second day, 
That's all I want you to do. Juice is in the morning. The vegetable juice is in the morning. And from 12 o'clock to 7 o'clock, you're going to have your fruit juices because the temperature is hot now. Yeah. Fruits should be taken between the hours of 12 and 7. So in the morning time, from 6 or 7 a.m. to 12 p.m., you're going to have your juices off, your pepper, your bell peppers, your garlic, your stick, your gingers, your cucumbers, your celery, your green apples, your, your turmeric, and one handful of parsley. And that going to, you're going to drink that till 12 o'clock. And from 12 o'clock, you're going to have your grapes, your blueberries, your gooseberries, your blackberries, your beets. You're going to mix them in a blender with coconut water or some juice, and you blend it up with a uh, 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 and drink that. And you drink that from 12, go straight. And you eat a lot of the fruits. Not acid fruits, or acid fruits. That's what you're going to have for me on the second day. And check your pressure. Check your pressure. But, remember, if you have severe hypertension, you have to stay on your medication. Don't come off. So I'm going to teach you how to wean yourself off. Yeah? Follow me now. Next one. You're going up. Hold the supplements. If the pressure is coming from the endocrine system, you're going to have to get adrenal support or endocrine nerve formula from Ambrosia Health Food Stores or Patrick Dell's Holistic Healing.com, the website. Kidney and bladder blend in case you have trouble in the kidney and your GFR is in the 30s or the 40s, meaning that you are stage 3 or stage 2 kidney disease because if you have high blood pressure, it can damage your kidney. So don't forget, you have to work on the kidney and the heart at the same time because they're brothers and sisters. Yeah? So you're going to get those. So on the third day, on day three, day number three, you start taking your herb teas now. Because you're clean. And you clean the first day. And you drink lots of water the first day with coconut water. And on the second day, you juice. Yeah? And you eat lots of fruits. And you drink a lot of fruit juices. And you're checking your pressure. And you're logging it down. You're logging it down. And you're looking at, you're looking at the pressure. And you say, oh, shoot. It's getting down. It's going high. You're supposed to know. And then you're going to have your artery cleaner. We're going to tell you what they are. Artery cleaner are Colenzonia, Marcadon. Artery cleaner is Cayenne pepper. Artery cleaner is Horse chestnut. Artery cleaner is Lyceum fruit. Artery cleaner is Ginkgo. Because Ginkgo gives the heart send, uh, 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 circulation to your heart muscle. Huh? Artery cleaner is hot and leaf and flower, hot and fruit and hot and berries. Because hot and leaf and flower and fruit and berries give the heart a stronger contraction and drop the cholesterol level and prevent plaque from forming on the walls of the arteries. Uh, so that's what you're doing. But they all come in the high blood pressure blend. So in the high blood pressure blend, you're not only having herb there for high blood pressure, but you're having herb there for cleaning up the arteries. Yeah? Olive leaf. Linden flow, Hortan, huh? Sisanda berry, Ashwagandha, if there is stress, if there is high cortisol level, B5, huh? If there is congestive heart failure, huh? Lily of the Valley, if there is water in the heart, boom, to move the water, diuretics. So you have to communicate with Patrick Dells on a regular basis, yeah? So we're going to give you your number. So when you're on a program, you can call me and let me know what you're doing, or you can send me your numbers. And I could tell you how to wean yourself of them demons. I could tell you how to wean yourself of Los Satan, the demon. I can tell you how to wean yourself of a tenderal, the demon. I can tell you how to wean yourself of Bezai, the demon. I can teach you how to wean yourself of Nifelapin, the demon. Catch and turn the block. All of them. Wean, wean yourself off. So on the third day, you still, you still juicing. Huh? You still juicing because you're juicing for 30 days. You doing this juices here for 30 days. Every day. Five to six glasses per day. And I could guarantee you if you have high blood pressure, eh? in 30 days, if it's mild to moderate, oh my goodness, you'll be coming off them demons and the sick your belly will never see you. Period. So you're doing this for 30 days. You're taking all these, these herbs for 30 days together. They blend together. And these teas should be taken three times for day, per day. 
for 35 days every day and you check in your pressure for me and you're logging it down and every so often you call patrick and say patrick i'm going to send you the pictures of my high blood pressure and i'm going to look at it and if you're on medication i will make you skip the days so monday you're going to you're going to take your drug with all these things tuesday you ain't taking no drug but you're checking your pressure so when you're taking a drug and you check your pressure you're going to say pressure reads 130 over fit over 90 with medication on Tuesday, you check the pressure. Pressure reads 130 over 90 without medication. Now, when I see that you are not taking the medication for one day and your pressure stays normal for at least five days, I will wean you off another day for two days. And then you take the drug, the demon drug, for Monday. You don't take it Tuesday and Wednesday. You take it Thursday. You don't take it Friday and Saturday. But you check it. And when you're not taking the drug, the demon, the demon drug on Friday and Saturday, and you see your numbers that got good, you skip another day to treat. That's what I did. It took me six months to come up with them demon drugs after my stroke. So don't let them tell you you can't fix it. Now, when you are on the program, because lots of people who have high blood pressure or hypertension, they have muscles full of free radicals. They have muscles full of wounds, parasites. So you have to use selenium, 200 micrograms every day, in order for you to remove the free radical that was damaging your heart muscle, the molecules. They are found in the body from food metabolism. But if you have over a certain number of them, they can start damaging your heart muscle. The same free radical can start damaging your arteries, damaging your blood vessels, and causing you to have all these troubles in your heart, and the doctor man don't know, so he put you on a goddamn drug forever and ever. Amen. He, he only controlled you. He controls you. And you don't want nobody controlling you. You want to have your own way. Because you're the boss. Your body heal itself. So 200 million micrograms of selenium, selenium per day is going to do what? It's going to get rid of all the free radicals that is damaging your heart muscle and it's going to get rid of all the free radicals that is damaging your vessels so you don't get blood vessel disease and you don't have to go and put a stent in your, arter in your arteries because your cholesterol is going to drop naturally once you're on this program. All your so-called bad cholesterol LDL is going to drop and your the so-called good cholesterol ACL will rise. And your VLDL, very low density lipoprotein, going to go back to 20 and 18. And your triglycerides also going to drop. Because now your liver is working properly. Because you have to have good liver health in order for you to have good heart health. And you must have good liver health in order for you to have good cholesterol levels. Because the liver is very significant in cholesterol metabolization vitamin e 800 iu per day 400 iu in the morning 400 iu in the evening b12 2000 micrograms per day if the pressure is coming from the brain to have the neurotransmitters in the brain so if you have what we call intracranial hypertension get some b12 get some l-theanine get some gaba get some dha and get some brain food and you will get rid of the hypertension and it's in your brain because it is just pressure around your brain oh god people jesus stress be complex two per day if you are living in a stressful society or in a stressful home or on a stressful job because once you are stressed your cortisol level which is a stress hormone is going to rise and once the cortisol level rise your 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 uh adrenaline is going to rise too and once these two start rising one two things going to happen it's going to affect your heart it's going to cause you to have trouble with cancer because it's going to raise the th2 lymphocyte that causes too much to grow in your system anyway see so you have to normalize the cortisol and normalize the adrenaline and not busier if you have severe hypertension you must take 1500 milligrams of liquid magnesium per day in solution 
If you have mild to moderate hypertension, you're going to use 600 milligrams. So if you have a, a, a pressure of 120 or 140 or over 100, you're going to take 600 to 8,000 milligrams of magnesium per day. If you have uh, a pressure of 200 systolic and 110 diastolic, you're going to take 1,500 of magnesium per day. If you have mild to moderate hypertension, you're going to take 2,000 micrograms of folate, not folic, folate acid per day. Why, Patrick Debs? Because folate acid is found in your heart muscle. And because you're eating the cooked food so regular, on a regular basis, you're eating dead atoms, so you're not feeding your heart no folate acid, so the heart can never function. But when you put the folate acid in there, and it helps with cell division, everything divides, and the heart functions properly, and now your heart, the pressure starts dropping because it is getting enough folate acid. 2,000 micrograms. CoQ10. Gel. And with nitric oxide. Don't forget. CoQ10 with nitric oxide. Because nitric oxide is going to open the vessels. And make the, the blood flow better. So the left ventricle, right ventricle, will work better. The left atrium, right atrium, will work. The chamber will work well. The motor valve will work well. It will open and close properly. Because now you are feeding your heart what your heart needed for 20 years. They have you on this goddamn job. Yeah? So CoQ10, you're going to start off with 100 milligram per day. And every week, I want you to add 100 milligram more till you get to 400 milligram per day. Because CoQ10 takes three months to get into your heart muscle. Don't forget, I told you that. CoQ10 takes three months to get into your heart muscle. Don't give up. And then you're going to get a product called heart. And in that heart, you're going to see in the bottom it says EDTA with a heart. So in the heart, we're going to give you a picture of those. Heart, you're going to say EDTA in the bottom of that particular supplement. It sells out pretty fast. You know why it sells out? Because lots of people who have blockages in the arteries and they take that guy right here and they go and they take the herbs and they clean up the arteries, the doctor say, hey, hey, man, what did you do, man? I ain't seen no blockage no more. Because we didn't go to your way, guy. We didn't come and to you and want you to open your chest and put some strength in your chest in the arteries. We did it with EDT naturally. Yeah? Olive leaf extract, three per day. And olive leaf also has antiviral activity. So if there is trouble in the heart and there is a virus coming in from the lung that's going to affect your heart, you better get some olive leaf extract. Yeah? And if you follow this program properly, hey man, I tell all you, man, or you come just like me, I need no drugs no more. Throw them in the garbage. Because he, the doctor, he was not taught how to repair your hypertension in medical school. So in that school of thought, in the medical system, the professor say, well, when you go to, do, to open your clinic, wherever you're going to go, I want you to know that you have to tell the people, Rockefeller tell us that there's no cure for nothing. So go tell the people there's no cure for no viruses. Who tell the people there's no cure for hypertension? Tell them if they have diabetes, you can't cure that either. They got to take metformin and glucobride and all these drugs forever and diesel and all that forever because there's no cure. So you come out as a doctor and telling us there's no cure. And because we are no better, we don't do no, no, no research. We say, okay, doc, well, we got to come out and that. Well, I have it under control. No, you have it under, under control, but you ain't fixing nothing because you believe what he told you. He told me that too. He said to me, Mr. Dells, you had a stroke. You're going to get a revolving stroke if you don't take our drugs, if you don't take the atenodol, if you don't take the, the nifedipine calcium channel blockers. But I did not know by taking the calcium channel blockers, it was blocking calcium, whereby magnesium is a natural calcium mover, not a blocker of calcium. So calcium bangs your heart. So when you block your calcium, your calcium cannot get into the bones. So your calcium gets into your soft tissues and clog it up. And then long term, taking your calcium channel blockers, he have to go into your chest and remove the calcium plaque from the same drug that he gave you to use to 
to, to, to drop your high blood pressure. He give you beza. He give you hydrochloroxide for black people. They say black people respond better to hydrochloroxide. He give you the tarsi diuretics. And he push out all your potassium. And then he had to give you some soaking to put it back. Yeah. But you hope for God put a herb called nettle leaf and dandelion leaf on the earth. And they are what we call potassium sparing diuretics. And they are also in your blood pressure blend. Yeah. Go back up. You're almost done. Take all this information down. And you're gonna call, you can call me at um 1473146231 and you can add me on WhatsApp and every three days you're going to communicate to me on the phone and you're going to you're going to send me your numbers and um i'm going to let you know when you can come off the next the uh the drug day by day wean yourself off do not come off your medication wean yourself off your drug do not come off like that i couldn't come off either because i had lots of i had a, i had a very high level of hypertension and i had a stroke so do not come off your medication like that wean yourself off and i will guide you and teach you what to come up them demons they said to us there's no cure for high blood pressure there's no cure for heart disease there's no cure for viruses but the same people who tell you there's no cure for all these viruses go in and look at the world the, the, the cell called cytotoxic cell look at it up. look up the cytotoxic cell and see what the cytotoxic cell do a cytotoxic cell is a white blood cell that kill viruses and destroy cancer cells that is in that is invaded by a virus cytotoxic cells so if they tell me the same man i tell you that viruses can't fix and he tells you that the cytotoxic cell is a killer cell that kill viruses or kill a cell that is cancerous that that is that have a virus so how come you can fix these things because you've been brainwashed and a lot of us still brainwashed and no matter what we hear what we see we still being brainwashed by the medical shit still. We are brainwashed by them. Sorry to say. So they told me, hey, Patrick, your heart, your heart is bad. And you got to take all the drugs till you die. I said, oh, shoot. And I'm taking a ton of all every day, every day. And I realize I can't, my penis can't grow because it can't get hard because the, the atenol is, to, is throwing up my heartbeat. And my penis needs blood. So I had to find out where to come up with them demons. And that is the reason why a lot of brothers who have hypertension don't take these drugs. Because they mess, up, they mess up the sex life. You see what I'm saying? So I, I, I wean myself off. Yeah? And I come and I teach people how to wean themselves off also. So, I advise you to do programs every so often. Once you fix your hypertension, don't go back. Don't go back to the nasty old way that you had. You could indulge once in a while, but don't go back. Because Christ said when you go back, the demon come up with seven more demons more deadly than him. And the state of that man, he become more detrimental. You see? So you can't go back. You have to go and fix your heart. And after you fix your heart, you start eating the foods that will help your heart. Because heart healthy foods. And then you start combining your foods properly. All right? Wonderful. Son, come over here now, son, son. Yeah. You know what I want to do for me? I want you to get six limes, ten limes, so on. I want to get six grains of garlic. I want you to get ginger. And I want you to get some cayenne pepper. Come here, son, son. Get a camera for me. Take it up, take it up. Oh, you hold that? Yeah. Okay. All right. I want you to get 10 lambs or lemon. And I don't, don't want you to take the skin off. I want you to keep the skin on for me. And I want you to cut them lemon, lemon in four pieces when you're on the program. Yeah? Ten limes or lemon with the skin on and cut them in four pieces. I want you to get six grains of garlic. 
I want you to get a stick of ginger. I want you to get a pinch of cayenne pepper. Yeah? And I want you to put them in a blender with some coconut water or some apple juice. Because if you have, if you're taking hyper, if you're taking a, a calcium channel blockers, you cannot drink grapefruit juice. Don't forget that. If you're taking calcium channel blockers, you cannot drink grapefruit juice because the grapefruit juice have a compound called naringin that can potentiate the beta block, the calcium channel blockers. But they don't tell you that magnesium is so great. See me? See? See? He? You see magnesium? He's great. You don't need no beta blocker. You don't need no calcium channel blocker. He, he is a calcium mover, not a calcium blocker. My fellow then blocked calcium. And calcium gets into the soft tissues and causes you to get trouble in your heart long term. But he moves calcium. He acts on a traffic cop. He says, calcium, come. And calcium comes to the traffic light. And calcium put on his signal and says, I want to go north. And he says, okay, go north. And calcium goes north. And then bone and guides calcium into the bones. When you're taking my fellow pin, he don't do that. He blocks calcium. And calcium gets into the soft tissue because you can't go nowhere. And he, he, the cardiologist, or the doctor man, or a certain man, years from now, when you get 15, 60 years old, all the calcium pop up your arteries, and he start putting stent in your arterial walls, because he didn't know better. He wasn't taught that in medical school. I'm teaching you black people. I'm teaching my people to come up with them demons, man. So, million, he is a free radical scavenger of your heart muscle. Take him every day. See, I take them. That's, 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 that's me right here. See? See, that's me. That's what I take. I take the gels. See? I take the gels. Yeah? And they pop in the system quicker. And then I take what? CoQ10 with nitric oxide. Yeah? And if you want your piggy to get, to get the blood through to the piggy your hair, your wife will look. She will say, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, Patrick, oh, man. Woo, hard like a rock, man. Because of the nitric oxide. But I fix my heart with CoQ10. Red. Danger. Yeah, and I also take iodine. I take iodine in case them because all them all them things in the sky they coming and all this uh, this radiation, all these electromagnetic field we living around. We must take iodine to move all the excessive amount of radiation these demons are putting in the sky around our houses. People up here can learn them things. Otherwise, they won't have us taking these drugs forever. And all you will make the pharmaceutical company become rich and they're going to have a big yacht while you're living in an apartment building paying, paying, paying some rent. And you're spending all this, oh, my, my, oh, I have insurance. Your insurance is not assurance, though. You see what I'm saying? You brainwash us. We are brainwashed. We are brainwashed. We are going to work for 95. Just like in slavery days, we're going to walk the land. And then the, the, the man on the horse watching all the slave, the slave, and he had to go on and, and, and report to the master. And after sundown, we go inside and we sleep and we get up again. We go to work again the next day on a slave ship, on a plantation, black people. But now they have it differently because the chain is off your feet and your hands now. They give you a job 95 and it's okay. You're going to work till you get to be 60 years old. Uh, you have 25 years in the company. Okay, you can retire now. And then we go and they give us a retirement fund and social security. <laughs> so it is, man. You see what I'm saying? Yeah? So they train us to be that way. They train us not to think for ourselves. Yeah? I mean, we say, well, the doctor is, is, is the boss and he knows. He, he knows. He knows lots of things, but he, he still has to learn because he still, he still can learn, not because he's a doctor. You're not too old to learn, brother. You're not too old to learn, sister. We can teach you a few things because all some of the people you put into hospice with cancer, we take them out. So how come you are, you are big oncologists and we take out some of the people from hospice? Who, who put them to die and they're out right now. How come? Yeah? All the drugs you give people that cause neuropathy, how come you fix them the neuropathy? You say you can't fix it. So you could learn something from us also. How come the woman who has breast cancer? Hmm? You don't teach her how to drop her TH2 lymphocyte to prevent the cancer from growing. How come you don't teach her that? How come you don't teach the woman who have triple negative breast cancer to raise her TH1 lymphocyte via the adrenal glands by dropping a cortisol level and giving it the medulla B5? How come you don't teach her that? How come you don't teach the people who have high blood pressure to go and change the diet 
and start taking magnesia, taurine, l carnitine coq10, drop the homocysteine, homocysteine levels. Yeah? And then they will see the pressure drop and go away. And change and stop the, all, the, all the fattening foods. How come you don't teach them that? How come you don't teach them these things? Because why? Because you are working for the pharmaceutical companies. You see? So you have to do what they say. See? I work for God. I work for the most high Jehovah God. So I come and I teach you yeah, what he taught me. Yeah? Go back to the herbs. Because it's for the healing of the nation. Ezekiel 47, 12. Go back to the herbs. Genesis 1, verses 29. Go back to the herbs. Solomon, Song of the Solomon, 7, verses 3 and 7. Go back to the herbs. Revelation 21. And the herbs shall be for the healing of the nation. Not no drugs. So I want you to get 10 lives. Six grain of God. One stick of ginger. A pinch of cayenne pepper. And I want you to blend that in a blender. Yeah? When you're on a program. Yeah? Blend it up in a blender with some coconut water. Or some apple juice. Yeah? And I want you to put some blueberries in there. Blend it, blue, the, blue, the blueberries with it too also. Yeah? And I want you to blend up some raspberries. And I want you to take one rum glass of that mixture. First thing in the morning. Last thing at night. With that program. And you start checking your pressure. And that's going to start to clean up the arteries. Drop your cholesterol. Remove free radicals. Yeah? Fix anything that's affecting your heart. Give your heart a stronger contraction and prevent a fibrillation. Prevent embolism. Prevent DVT, deep vein thrombosis. It's going to prevent also left and right ventricle hypertrophy. It's going to help the superior vena cava to receive the deoxygenated blood from your brain to chuck it into the atrium. Yeah? It's going to help your liver, the hepatic vein, to send all the D oxygenated blood to the to the inferior vena cava to send it into the right atrium, into the right ventricle, into the pulmonary vein to go to your lung because you now you're eating clean and you're combining your food together you're not eating no starch with no protein, you're not eating rice and peas together with fish and chicken you're not eating macaroni and cheese with chicken because it's a bad combination for your heart and they're going to slow up the movement of the blood because they are all acid foods together so I want you to go to my website and I want you to look for a program called a BioLife program and download it for free no money free download and I want you to follow that program because that program will teach you how to combine your foods when you're on my program to fix your heart and your high blood pressure and your pH going to go to what? Ah, 7.45. Your pH, your body going to be 80% alkaline and 20% acidic because now you're eating the foods and your pH is 80% acidic and 20% alkaline. But it's supposed to be the opposite. But this program here is going to change that. And that's the reason why you got to get some strips you got to pee on them strips, and you got to look at your pH every morning, and you got to look and see the yellow is acidic, and the green, green, green is alkaline. And when you see your numbers have to go to the green, you know now that your heart will function better because you are living in an alkaline terrain, and your pressure will drop. And each time you check your pressure, you lock it down. And when you lock it down, you're going to see fast. Come over here, son, son. Come fast, man. You're almost done. Watch me now. 200, come over here, take it down. 200. Over 100, diastolic. You start over here. You're doing a program. And after a week, you say, it says 180. Over 90. Yeah? And then another couple of days, you check checking again. It says 160. Over 85. And you're going again and you're checking. And you're checking. And you're checking twice per day. And you see it says 150. Yeah? 
over 80. When you're young, you're getting good now. Because you know for a fact, you ain't going back up there. Because you're going to fluctuate, you know. Because remember, when you're fixing your, when you're fixing your heart, your number going to fluctuate. You're going to start to see go like a haywire up and down, up and down, up and down, because now you're trying to repair your heart. So your heart is trying to feed on the new school or the new food you're feeding him. So you're going to fluctuate. But later on down, you will see, you're going to 130 over 80. And then you will see coming to 120 over 80. And then you might even see go to what? You go to all what? 110 <laughs> over 70. Because why now? You ain't going back up over here. That's the key. I'm teaching you. That's what I did. So I check and I check. And I then go back over here. I start coming down. So once you're coming down, you know for a fact that your heart is responding to what you're doing and you keep on doing what you are doing every day. Don't give up. Just keep it because you're going to fluctuate. You, you, you're going to go like a yo-yo sometime. You're going to say, oh my goodness, I, I go today, I bat them all. I go today, I bat them all. But automatically, after a couple of weeks, you're going to see them numbers start dropping down and you will see that them numbers didn't go back up here no more. And then you will see your pause go to what? To 70. Your pause go to what? 65. Your pause go to what? 60. Not 100. Not 120 no more. Because your thyroid gland now is responding because the endocrine glands is responding to what you're doing because they all function in an alkaline terrain. You see? It's not hard. It's easy. But lots of people don't have no discipline. They like to eat too much food. But yes, sir. So if you want to do the program, you can call us. Call Ambrosia 718 469 Area code 718-469-0985. Ask for Ashanti. That's my brother from another mother. Or you can go to the website, look for heart health. Look for kidney and bladder cleanse. If you have kidney disease, talk to me first. If you have stage 3 kidney disease, talk to me first. If you have stage 4 kidney disease, pre-dialysis, talk to me first. My number is 1473-416-2310-1473-420-0856. Or when I'm in New York again on next week, it's going to be 631-530-2329. And then you can add me on WhatsApp. And then when you start a program, you can call me and, and I will guide you. And you can send me some pictures. That's what all my clients do. They go on the program and they send me the pictures and I say, okay, you're doing good, your man. Your pressure is dropping. And then I said, okay, numbers again, three days. They send me the numbers again. I say, okay, my brother, you're good. Let's keep another day of the demon drugs. Yeah? Come again. I say, Patrick, the number is good, man. 115 over 80. Years. Demon drugs. Come on, the demon drugs. Wean yourself off the drugs. And they wean themselves off. After they wean themselves off, I keep them on the herbs and the supplementation for one more month. Then I take them off for everything. And I say to them, brother, sister, I want you now to control your pressure with diet and exercise. And then you go along, along the way, and you go and teach somebody else in your neighborhood. Because each one teach one. Don't forget that. Blessed love. Sansa, give thanks. Yeah, done. Blessed night, give thanks and praise to the Most High Jehovah God. And don't forget that if you want to repair any disease, any disease can be cured. There is only incurable people. Don't, don't wait till that disease damage your heart muscle or the cancer run into your lung or the cancer run into your brain. Or the cancer running into your liver. Because once the cancer gets into the liver in an, in an organ, it's going to destroy you. It's, difficult, it's more difficult to repair. We have our brother now who is doing well. Even the oncologist is saying to him, what are you doing, man, from colon cancer? And they say colon cancer can't fix. And he had a, another guy who had colon cancer and did all the chemotherapy, all the radiation, and died last week. He died. And this brother is doing our program. He was in Grenada. And he's doing so well. Because you know why? We are making his mind be clean and clear and cleaning up his system. And his doctor is the means. You understand? It can be done. But you have to have that discipline in your mind and in your heart. And stop making food a, 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 a detrimental poison to you. Use your food as your medicine. Because no, you are using your medicine. The Atenolol, the Losartic, the Zestrin. The, the, the bear's eye, the nifedipine, 
that ten at all. No, you're using them as your medicine, but they're not your medicine. You see, you're doing it the wrong way. You're supposed to use your food as your medicine, not your medicine as your food. You see, and in the process, you're taking all these drugs, all these heart troubles, and what happens to your kidney? Damage it long term. What happened to your liver? Damage it long term. Why? Because all these drugs that you pop every day, they must go through these two organs for filterization. Hmm? And if these organs cannot filter them properly, it's going to start storing the residues of these chemicals that they put in your system from a laboratory. And then long term, you get to be old age and 80 and 90, you start working with a stick. You start going on dialysis because it damaged your kidney, not knowing that all these demons that you've been taking from infancy, 20 years old, 40 years, you're taking them drugs, damage you like my mother, damage her brain and give her stroke long term. She died from the second one. I'm telling you from experience. And look at me. All of them who told me, the three of them said, if you don't take them drugs, Mr. Dennis, for life, you're going to get another stroke and you're going to die. And I say, hell no. I ain't taking nothing for the rest of my life. That is a dead sentence to me. So I went and I disciplined myself. And I go and put myself on a program. And even now to this day, I still do programs. I clean and detoxify. And my pressure is 115 over 70. 120 over 80. 110 over 70. Hmm? Never back to 220. Never back to 110 diastolic. And all of them, the three of these Caucasians who told me I was going to die. If I don't take the drugs, all of them dead, die. One died from cancer, one died from a stroke, and one died from a thing from something with the brain. All of them dead. And look at me. I'm still here with the grace of God, the most high Jehovah God. Take that. Because God tell me to come and teach you all what I did and what I'm doing for others to come up with drugs. You can do the same if you have the discipline. So God bless you. And follow the program. It's all there. Write it down. Give thanks. Blessed love. Patrick Dells, holistichealing.com. Patrick Dells, holistichealing.com. Natural Revolution, Dr. Natural Revolution, you say? Natural Revolution, anything you are real revolution. Okay. Patrick Dells, holistichealing.com. Ambrosia Health Foods, 1718-469-0985. Blessing, and don't forget to take my number down. Add me on WhatsApp. When you start the program, let me know you have every, everything. And we can work together and I, can, and I can guide you and I can wean you off the drugs. Wean you off. Don't take you off. Don't take you off like that. Wean you off day by day. Hmm? And you're going to see. And you're going to teach somebody else. Blessed love. Give thanks. Thank you for watching. And thanks for the support, everybody.